Bom dia, estão me ouvindo? Acho que sim. Ah, tá. Ah, entendi, tá. Uh, bom dia a todos, então. É... Eu sou a Simone Nardim Bey, sou, acho que vocês não me conheciam ainda, sou pós-doc é, no PPG da Biomol. É, hoje, então, a gente vai receber no nosso seminário, a professora Andréia está em aula, por isso que eu vim substituí-la. Nós vamos receber o professor Atila Gatti, da Universidade de Siget, espero ter pronunciado certinho, pelo menos parecido, da Hungria, por isso nosso seminário também... É, mais cedo às 10 horas da manhã, né? pela diferença de fuso horário. Uh, eu lembro a vocês, então, para subscrever o nosso canal, para a gente continuar existindo na plataforma do YouTube, e lembrar que as perguntas, então, podem ser deixadas no nosso chat, em português ou em inglês. E agora eu passo a palavra para a professora Ana Amélia, que vai fazer a introdução do professor Atila em inglês. É, bom dia a todos. Our speaker today is an associate professor at the Department of Microbiology of University of Sigurd, Hungary, where he is the head of the AMBO Candida Research Group. He has several cooperation with Brazilian research, and he was visiting professor at Federal University of Rio de Janeiro here in Brazil. In the beginning of the century, he's gained his PhD at University of Sigurd, working on Cryptococcus hungary Hungaricus. His first postdoctoral training was at the University of Hamburg, Germany, as, as a Marie Curie fellow. He studied the opportunist fungal uh, human, human pathogen uh, candida species. In 2005, he joined the prof, Professor Joshua Nozanchuk Laboratory at Einstein College of Medicine in New York as a Fulbright Scholar Program Fellow. He investigates the virulence and pathogenesis of the fungal pat pathogens as uh, Stoplasma capsulatum, Cryptococcus neoformans, and the Candida parapsilosis. After three years, he returned to Hungary with the support of EMBO installation grant. Nowadays, his laboratory focuses on the development of tools of, for genetic manipulation of Candida parapsilosis and the study of Candida virulence and pathogenesis host immune response and, uh, of fungal infection. At least, but equally important, he is a great artist with beautiful paintings, <laughs> and his father makes the best palinka in the world. So <laughs> let me introduce you, Dr. Attila Gaxer. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, very nice uh, introduction. So, just a minute. Yes. So I uh, I would like to I would like to thank to uh, the organizers, especially to Professor Anamelia Boca, to uh, for this invitation and uh, for this uh, absolute uh, uh, unique opportunity to share with you uh, some uh, results that we recently gained in my laboratory regarding the anti-candida immunity. So. Um, First, let me introduce a little bit the fungal infections and especially focus on invasive fungal infections. And uh, I always start my presentations with this slide because I think it's generally not recognized, uh, recognized well enough how important fungal infections can be. So just start with the mortality rate. It is actually almost equal than malaria and tuberculosis together but also it's comparable to the loss caused by the breast cancer. Candida species alone, more than 70, uh, 750,000 life-threatening infections, infection causing uh, annually. And, uh, you know, since the uh, medical uh, therapies are improving dramatically in the last couple of uh, decades, uh, a lot more immune compromised patients are actually survives very severe uh, uh, diseases. That is why fungal infections become more and more uh, prevalent in uh, uh, ICUs uh, and also in, uh, in general 
uh, hospitals because nowadays we are able to do organ transplantation, we do chemotherapy to, uh, to uh, cure uh, or try to cure uh, cancer and so on, which all of these um, therapies are actually causing immune suppression. And this is opening the door for these uh, microbes to infect our body. Um, the candida uh, mortality, the candida infections mortality is also extremely high. It can be as high as 70%. Um, altogether, there are more than 170 different candida species. But fortunately, there are only, let's say, uh, uh, hence uh, full, which are uh, causing real disease in humans. And these five species that I listed here, they are the major ones. Candida albicans, Candida parapsilosis, Glabrata tropicalis, and Cruzae. Um, candida species can have different forms if you look at them in the mi microscope. So the one is uh, the so-called yeast form. As you can see here, this is the round uh, cell shape this is uh, uh, very common. And also they can form elongated blastospores. This is actually the pseudohyphae form. And uh, they also can form a true hyphae. I would like to focus a little bit on candida parapsilosis. Why we think it's an important pathogen and what are the biological features that makes this uh, particular organism really interesting for us. For example, parapsilosis is a normal commons of, of human skin, but is able to cause serious conditions in immune-compromised patients. And there is actually a very common mistake, even in the field, that candida albicans, which is the most relevant uh, uh, candida spe species that is causing disease, is not a normal commons of the human skin. So this is a, this is a big difference between these two species. And they have also differences in the, let's say, preferences of patients. So parapsilosis is the second most uh, uh, frequent cause of candidemia if you look at, in general, the patient group. But if you look at the under the age of 18 patients, then, uh, then uh, parapsilosis can be a leader, uh, especially in low birth weight neonates. So, somehow the immune response is different uh, to these two um, organisms, at least, uh, at least these uh, clinical facts suggest that. So what are the antifungal therapies today? So as I mentioned, immune suppressed patients are uh, in a high risk group. What are immune suppression, for example, leukemia, AIDS, or steroid treatments, chemotherapy, neutropenia are belonging to this. So one, these uh, risk factors are together that they open the door for, uh, for infection, for example, candida, and you will get an invasive mycosis. So one therapy option is doing antifungal treatment, but you have to know that antifungal resistance uh, are developing more and more frequently in uh, many different uh, fungal species. So the scientists as well as, and also physicians are looking for other options to treat invasive mycosis. And immune therapy can be an option. Uh, some um, uh, therapy uh, development are ongoing already. For example, the, the cytokine therapy or antibody therapy or, for example, the T cell transfer can be can be a promising uh, antifungal treatment. But to be able to develop such type of immune therapy, you have to understand the immune response against these pathogens. And we have actually a quite large number of data about sensing and immune response to candida albicans. You can see here the so-called PRR, PRRs, the pattern recognition receptors, which are responsible to recognize the so-called PAMPs, the uh, pathogen-associated molecular patterns. Uh, and then when these two, the receptor and the ligand, are interacting, 
Then signaling pathways are initiated in the immune cell, and at the end, there will be a chemokine cytokine production, phagocytosis, or such uh, cellular responses, which are really important for the antifungal immune response. Uh, as you can see here, there are many different PRRs existing, and there are many different uh, pumps that are already um, identified uh, and also present in fungal cells. So they are actually important during the recognition process. I'm not going to talk about that much uh, uh, today about the, about the inflammasomes, but uh, they are also an important component of the anti, uh, antifungal immune response. But there is really uh, few information about the specific response to candida parapsilosis. There are actually, um, uh, let's say, um, a dogma in our field that the antifungal response, the immune response, is actually uniform. And we wanted to analyze this, if, if this is really true, that antifungal response is uniform, so the immune system does not really care about what type of uh, fungal species are infecting our body. So to start this work, I would like to introduce our first uh, uh, data slides where we investigated the most prominent uh, PRR, uh, the Dectin-1, in, uh, in uh, this role in the candida parapsilosis uh, immune response. So what we did, we actually uh, injected intravenously um, Dactin-1 knockout mice. And uh, uh, okay, the, the, the first uh, slide is just showing you the, the wild type, uh, wild type uh, situation. So this is a wild type mouse we inject them with candida parapsilosis, and if you look at the days, then you see that is a, that is a significant reduction of the, of the fungal burden in different uh, organs, such as kidney, liver, spleen, and brain. So that is suggesting that the wild-type mice is actually able to handle the candida parapsilosis infection, so eventually these animals will be healed after a while. And as you can see here, if we measure the different cytokines such as TNF-alpha, IL-1 beta, IL-6, or GMCSF, then you see at the early time point there is an initiation of immune response, then is a down regulation of the inflammatory response. So this is a normal immune response that would, you would expect. Actually, I have to mention that if you inject uh, and wild type mice with candida parapsilosis, the mice are healing. You cannot uh, kill them with candida parapsilosis. And this is the reason why. So the, the wild type mice are able to handle the infection. So clear, clear the organs. So if we infected Dactin-1 KO mice, then, oh, sorry, Dactin-1 KO mice with candida parapsilosis, then we found exactly the same. If you remember the picture, the previous slide was almost the same. So um, we concluded, concluded that the Dactin-1, at least in the systemic infection, does not play that much role in uh, uh, the control of candida parapsilosis. Only one exception is the brain. If you look at the brain, the uh, the black one is the Dactin-1 knockout mice. It, it shows a higher CFU after day seven. We don't know the reason, reason yet, but we are investigating this, this uh, uh, phenotype. Interestingly enough, if we took out only the macrophages from this mice, so actually we took the bones, we took out the bone marrow, and we differentiated from the progenitor cells, macrophages, using this bone marrow, and we compared the wild type with the knockout, then we found a significantly reduced uh, phagocytic capacity of the bone marrow-derived macrophages when they were derived from the Dactin-1 knockout. And it was true, true also for the peritoneal macrophages. 
why we are using two types of macrophages from the same animal? Because they have uh, several different, different behaviors. So these bone marrow derived macrophages produce different uh, cytokines and a little bit different level than peritoneal macrophages. But as you can see here, both of them, both of them showed a, a significantly reduced capacity to phagocytose the candida parapsilosis cells. So um, that was actually the initiating point where we asked, okay, then if dactin one is showing no response in vivo, in vivo or no role in vivo, but has a very strong uh, phenotype in vitro, what can be the the uh, the reason for that? And uh, we just uh, uh, summarize all of the data that we uh, that we have about this question. So um, our laboratory showed previously that if you uh, block the dactin-1 recognition, that you have a reduced TNF-alpha production in macrophages. We also showed that uh, dactin-1 knockout mice survive uh, as good as wild types, and it has been also described by Neil Gold's lab recently. And uh, we also had uh, some evidence from 2017 from our own lab that if you use uh, a sick inhibitor in uh, uh, different uh, uh, macrophage populations, then you will have a reduced IL-1 beta production. But we do, do not have any information about CARD9 in candida parapsilosis uh, immunity. But you might ask, why CARD9 and why SICK? So I try to answer this. This is a quite busy slide and a little bit scary, especially because some words are in Hungarian. So, but I will explain this. So don't worry, you don't need to uh, learn Hungarian, especially not in 20 minutes. So why SICK and why CARD9? So if you look at this picture, then you will realize immediately that SICK uh, is playing, this is a tyrosine kinase, and it plays an absolute central role in, uh, in, uh, in the uh, antifungal immunity. So it has been shown that dactin-1, dactin-2, dactin-3, and minkel uh, can signal through SIC1, uh, SIC uh, uh, kinase. I have to mention that dactin-1 has an alternative, uh, alternative possibility to signal without uh, the direct contact, uh, contact with uh, to sick, but I'm not going to talk about that, that pathway today. But as you can see here, many, many PRRs are signaling through sick. And additionally to this, CARD9, uh, as a, which is an adapter molecule, uh, uh, can also regulate cytokine and uh, chemokine production via PKC delta and so-called WAF uh, proteins. Um, but uh, CARD9 can also play an important role in the, in the um, inflammasome assembly. So um, this picture is actually showing you that these two molecules are playing a very important role in the antifungal immunity, and that's why we were interested how they actually uh, uh, modulate the uh, specific response against candida parapsilosis. So the question is really obvious, but the tools, how you can answer this question is not that easy. And why is that? So knocking out a sick is a very difficult, uh, difficult problem because sick uh, plays not only role in many different immune uh, response, but is a key element of the development of, uh, of the mouse body. So you cannot knock out uh, a, a gene uh, which codes the sick in the mouse and just use that because it's um, lethal. It's, uh, uh, the, 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 the fetus is not going to survive. So the only way to generate a sick knockout is generating a so-called chimeric mouse. So what they do is actually they uh, take the, the sick minus uh, fetus 
and then they are transplanting the liver of this uh, uh, embryo to a literally irradiated adult mice. So what is going to happen? This adult mice is completely cleared. They do not have any wild type uh, hematopoietic cells. And this, this fetal liver is going to uh, produce the sick minus hematopoietic cells. So what is happening, this chimeric mouse will have only sick minus uh, hematopoietic cell, cells, but other organs and other tissues still have the sick. That's why they can survive. The CAR9 is not that difficult, but because we wanted to compare these two models, that's why Attila Mochai, who is a great Hungarian uh, a scientist uh, also generated for us card nine chimeric chimeric mouses mice. So they were like exactly uh, they went through exactly the same procedure. So we 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 have sick and card nine uh, uh, chimeric mouses uh, mice uh, in this in this experiment. So the first question was uh, how sick uh, um, and card nine influences the key uh, 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 function of, uh, of the immune recognition, and this is actually the NF-kappa-B translocation. You probably heard about that NF-kappa-B is a transcription factor which regulates cytokine and chemokine production, besides many other immune function. But this is a key point. This is a key regulator uh, during the immune response. So what we did, we took the bone marrow-derived macrophages from both the sick and car uh, uh, chimeric mass, and we compared the, the NF-kappa-B uh, translocation from the cytoplasm to the nuclear. Uh, nucleus. So we use the imaging flow cytometry technique. You can see it here. Here is the nucleus. It's red. And uh, we also label the P65 uh, 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 unit of, uh, of the NF-kappa-B. And this is green. And uh, if you use a double channel, then you see that uh, the cytoplasmic localization of the P65 uh, uh, subunit. If the translocation happens, then these two signal translocates, and you will see this yellowish, uh, 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 yellowish uh, 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 color in the flow cytometer. So the the machine is able to to measure many thousands of cells. So we have a very strong statistically relevant uh, information about the NF kappa B translocation. So as you can see here. These are the candida parapsinosis uh, uh, isolates, and this is a positive control, uh, which is LPS. This is the lipopolysaccharide from bacterial cell. So as you can see here, uh, all cases, in the case of sick and also in CAR9, uh, the NF-kappa B translocation were significantly lower in the uh, absence of sick or CAR9. So the question is that if they, this is a key point during cytokine production, then how the cytokine production is actually altered? To answer this question, we first use the proton profiler. This is a very simple technique. You have a membrane, and the membrane contains a different, different cytokines. Uh, this is dotted on this, on this, um, uh, on this uh, membrane, and then you just do a simple hybridization, and uh, uh, after the hybridization, you will have these uh, black dots. And uh, in case you have uh, you have the the particular uh, cytokine in your in your sample, and as you can see here, the wild type showed quite strong response, producing TNF alpha, KC, MIP one alpha, which is a chemokine. MIP2, which is another chemokine. And it was true in both cases. But in the case of sick knockout, there was very little TNF alpha production. And, uh, and all the, the chemokines were produced at the same level as the wild type. In contrast, however, CARD9 does not show barely any uh, cytokine production. So we, we thought, OK, let's go do some ELISA and see what is uh, the, the quantitative numbers. 
So this is also very quite a quite a busy slide, but I try to explain that. So here is the bone marrow derived macrophages. I already mentioned them. So we took the bone marrow and we differentiated the progenitor cells to macrophages. We infected them with candida parapsilosis. These are the candida parapsilosis cells, and this is candida albicans here. And as you can see here, in both species, in both SICK and CART9, there was a very significant reduction in uh, TNF-alpha production. Look at this, candida albicans almost does not induce any TNF-alpha production if the SICK is not present. And it was also proved in peritoneal macrophages, almost the same numbers. Interestingly, however, uh, if you look at the, uh, the chemokines, uh, I already mentioned that KC, MIP, and one alpha, MIP2 are chemokines. These are the proteins that are responsible for the recruitment of other um, immune cells, such as neutrophils. So if, if, uh, um, if the macrophages are not producing chemokines, then neutrophils were, will be not uh, able to, uh, to migrate to the side of the, to the, to the side of infection. So here we found very interesting uh, things. Here you can see the candida albicans, uh, uh, candida albicans uh, uh, infected strains. There is absolutely a uh, uh, significant reduction in, in all three cases, which were, which were not true uh, for candida parapsilosis at all. So they produced as many uh, chemokines as the wild type. Uh, uh, in contrast, candida uh, card nine showed a reduction even in in the different uh, uh, different uh, chemokine production as well. So, just quickly summarize this cytokine results. We found that uh, inflammation is reduced, but the chemokine production is only reduced in the card nine knockout mice and not in the sick knockout mice in the case of candida parapsilosis, but it was generally reduced in the case of candida albicans. So we showed until now that NF-kappa B translocation is sick and cardinal dependent. We also showed that the cytokine production is also uh, uh, sick and cardinal dependent, but the chemokine uh, production is not sick dependent. So the next question, next question is that, okay, the cytokine production is altered, but how about the cellular response, the phagocytosis? And the phagocytic uh, capacity of the bone marrow-derived macrophages were also uh, uh, determined using this, uh, this uh, imaging flow cytometry, where you can uh, differentiate between the, the real phagocytosis and the attachment. So what we found is actually showed here that uh, in the case of sick, uh, we found that almost every time points, we use different time points, early time points and later time points, uh, there is very strict, uh, strict re reduction uh, of phagocytic capacity in terms of candida parapsilosis. But it is not that pronounced in the case of candida albicans. And surprisingly, CARD9 does not play a, a, a role at all in uh, phagocytosis of the macrophages. But it was not the only finding that we we saw. This machine is really a, a great tool to investigate host pathogen interactions because it is also able to determine how many cells were phagocytosed by an individual macrophages. So these bars are representing the number of, uh, of the macrophages, which has phagocytosed uh, a, a certain number of fungal cells. So for example, this population here, phagocytosed more than 15 uh, uh, yeast cell. The majority of the macrophages, however, are phagocyting about five yeast cell uh, per uh, macrophage. If you look at the sick knockouts, this um, um, the graph is completely shifted to, to the lower numbers. So here, the majority of the, uh, of the macrophages are only phagocytos, uh, one or two cells. So not only the phagocytic capacity, but at least the, 
the, the number uh, is also reduced uh, uh, how many yeast cells can be uh, taken up by one macrophage. So the phagocytosis is altered, we showed, but it does not mean actually that after phagocytosis, the intracellular killing will be also altered. So to, uh, to measure that, uh, we used a very uh, smart uh, technique. This is a pH rhodo uh, uh, stain. How it works, I'm going to show you. So it works, uh, this is a, a, a dye, a fluorescent dye. So we, uh, we label our cells with this pH rhodo stain. And, after, uh, and this is not fluorescence in the normal pH. After phagocytosis, as you all know, the phagosome is going to, uh, to fuse with lysosomes. And this lysosome, phagolysosomal fusion causes a drop of pH in this phagolysosome. This uh, lower pH, however, is also changing the uh, fluorescent, uh, fluorescence behavior of this dye. So inside the cell, they are going to uh, uh, show a fluorescent um, uh, signal. So as you can see here, uh, this is a not acidic uh, 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 signal, and you see here the acidic signal, which is more yellow. Uh, using this technique, we uh, determine that sick knockout macrophages are uh, less efficient to kill the cells inside the macrophage. So what we show here, they take up less cells, and once they took up the cells, they are less efficient to cure them. And this is only true for sick and not true for card mine. So uh, we also determined uh, the, the key, uh, killing efficiency with another technique. This is a very classical technique. We just determined the CFU, the colony forming unit after phagocytosis. So you, to, you put together the macrophages and the, the yeast cell after co-incubation, you just plate them and you count uh, in, uh, uh, and compare to the control where you do not have any macrophage. And then what we found was exactly the same as in the flow cytometric measurements, uh, there were a reduction in the case of sick knockouts. So that was the in vitro uh, experiment. So after that, we decided to do in vivo experiments, and we expected actually a very strong phenotype since there was altered cytokine production, phagocytosis, intracellular killing, and so on. Um, and it was actually completely true in the case of Candida albicans. So once we use the Candida albicans as an infection agent, and you can see immediately that sick knockouts are uh, dying really quickly after, I'm sorry, oops, after two days. And it was true for CARD9. After four days, all the CARD9 knockout mice were dead. Uh, so Candida albicans response, immune response, is really dependent on sick and CARD9. But if we used uh, Candida paroxylosis as an infection agent, there was absolutely no difference, or let's say a very slight difference. So uh, physically, the mice look the same. Once we uh, analyzed the, the colony forming units in a different organs like spleen, liver, and kidney, then you saw there is a slight increase, but not as high as in the case of Candida albica. So here you can see it's like, it's like three order higher uh, the CFU. So this, this kidney is really, really full with, with candida cells. And as you can see here in the macro, uh, uh, macroscopic picture, this is candida albicans infected sick chimera. So you can see actually lesions, uh, macro, macroscopic lesions full with fungal cells. And this is completely absent in the case of candida uh, parapsilosis. And uh, very similar effect in the case of card, uh, card nine knockout mice. Parapsilosis is showing a slight increase and only in the spleen, not even the kidney. And you have to know that kidney is actually the first uh, or the primary target of 
uh, uh, of infection in mouse. And it is also very well represented in the case of Candida albicans, again, a huge increase in the CFU in, in the kidneys, uh, uh, the card, card nine uh, knockout kidneys. And here, not as prominent as in the, in the case of the sick knockouts, but here you can see also huge macroscopic um, uh, fungal uh, plaques uh, all around the kidney, which is absolutely not present in the case of candida paroxylosis or the wild type chy chimeric, uh, chimeric uh, controls. And it was also shown in the, in the histopathology. So this is the wild type, very nice healthy tissue. And uh, this is the sick knockout. In the case of candida uh, paroxylosis, you see almost no alteration. In the case of candida albicans, however, you see a lot of fungal hyphae Inviting, invading into the tissue. And this was also true for the CARD9 uh, with a lot, lot of uh, infiltrating uh, um, uh, immune cells as well. Uh, so we wanted to know why is that, what, what is happening in the, in the kidney, and, uh, and we used the, the tissue lysates and measured IL-1 beta in the tissue lysates. And you can see here that uh, in the case of Candida albicans, we have an extremely high IL-1 beta production in, in the sick knockout uh, uh, infected, uh, infected uh, um, uh, mice. You might ask where uh, from are coming this, uh, this huge inflammation, since I already showed that macrophages are not producing cytokines, uh, neither TNF-alpha or other cytokines. So we believe the, the source of this IL-1 beta is actually non-hematopoietic uh, origin, but we have no evidence yet since they are, uh, the, the hematopoietic cells are altered in production of different cytokines. But the conclusion is important because we see that the uncontrolled, uh, uncontrolled fungal proliferation is actually causing an uncontrolled inflammation and probably the cause of death is uh, because of this uncontrolled inflammation in this sick and cardinal knockout mice. So we were happy, but after after a while, I while I was I was uh, a question uh, another question uh, asking another question: What is happening actually if we leave these animals longer time and? Uh, uh, will they uh, clear the, the fungal, uh, uh, fungal cells from the body or, or is going to be a different behavior? So we incubated our mice uh, more than uh, 30 days. And as you can see here, actually, surprisingly, after 30 days, the, uh, especially in the kidney, there was a very huge increase in candida paroxylosis uh, number of candida paroxylosis cells. So actually what happened here, uh, these animals are also lost the controls, uh, which are important to control the, uh, the infection. And it was also almost 100% copied by ca uh, CARD9 knockout mice. So you see here, there is a huge increase uh, of the CFUs in the kidney. So what we can conclude from these experiments that from the early time point, sick and card nine is important to control candida albicans infection, but not really in the case of candida paroxylosis. But the uh, later, later time points, the long-term infection is really depending on card nine and sick. So in summary, I can say you that dactin one knockout mice show no increased susceptibility to candida paroxylosis infection. CARD9 has no influence on fungal killing efficiency of macrophages. Sick might promote, while CARD9 has no effect on phagocytosis. Sick and CARD9 both have influence in cytokine production. Sick and CARD9 severe effect on systemic candida albicans infection, but very slight effect on the early candida paroxylosis infection. And the conclusion is that dactin-1 and the sick card 9 pathway may be, might be only a, a minor importance in the defense against candida paroxylosis, but only at the early immune response. 
but it is very important in long-term control. So the question is that we ask that, that spe species-specific immune response can be uh, present here. And I show you some additional slide, which is absolutely preliminary data, but can help you to understand how we try to, to dissect this question in the future. Again, Attila Mochai uh, uh, generated a nice neutropenic mouse model. This is a genetically modified neutropenic mouse model, which is not uh, uh, generated using antibodies or any other chemicals. So the, this gene, the so-called MCL1, is knocked out in this mouse. And what is happening, this gene product is absolutely essential for the migration of uh, uh, neutroph neutrophils from the bone marrow to the peripheral, peripheral uh, immune organs. So as you can see here, this mice does not have any circulating uh, uh, neutrophils uh, at all. So they, are, they do not have any neutrophils in the blood. Uh, however, they have a normal number of monocytes and normal number of B cells and T cells. So this is an excellent model to, to look at the neutropenia uh, as a model uh, in, in our hand. So why we use the neutropenic model? The, the first uh, reason was because we saw uh, actually no alteration in the, in the <clears throat> chemokine production um, in the case of sick knockouts. And the second one was we were interested how the, the neutrophils uh, can play a role in the early control of candida parapsinosis. Very, uh, we, so the first uh, control experiment, what we did, we infected this, uh, this neutropenic model with uh, uh, bacteria and candida albicans. And as you can see here, uh, these animals were extremely sensitive to candida albicans and also uh, aureus uh, uh, infection. So they, they, uh, they died uh, uh, within a couple of hours. So <clears throat> as you can see here, it was expected or without neutrophils, there is no uh, strong immune response, so they are, they are susceptible. But look at what we got with candida uh, uh, paroxynosis. So there is almost no effect. Losing all neutrophils, there is absolutely no effect. <clears throat> uh, even more interestingly, if you look at the brain, there is a reduction of CFU in the brain in this neutropenic mouse. The reason why is that, we don't know yet, but it is showing us that innate immune response is probably not the key element against candida parapsilosis infections because nor dectin-1 nor neutropenia is, uh, uh, I mean, lock of dectin-1 and neutropenia is absolutely not a predisposing effect for candida parapsilosis infections. So then we wanted to know if that's, this is not the, uh, the innate immune response, then probably it's the adaptive one. So we use skid mice, which is a, a, a mice uh, which does not have B or uh, and T cells. So this is, the, this is the, the model for the severe combined immune def uh, deficiency uh, uh, disease. And look at what we found. We found that uh, even in the uh, 14 days and even more, more pronounced after 30 days, uh, these mice were more susceptible to candida parapsilosis infection, especially in the brain and also in the liver. So it showed us that probably T cells and B cells are really important. So we wanted to know which one, T or B cells are important. So that's why we use the nude mice. The nude mice uh, uh, is also a specific mice model which uh, does not have uh, T cells. They have B cells, however. And uh, this preliminary data showed us that they are behaving exactly like the, like the skid mice. Look at this, uh, the kidney and the liver after 40 days are uh, much more colonized with candida parapsilosis cells. So I cannot give you a conclusion of this second part because we are not really knowing what is going on here 
but uh, we believe that it's probably uh, adaptive immunity, which is important in this case, and uh, innate immunity probably is more, more uh, a uniform response, but um, um, our hypothesis is that after, after the recognition, probably a species-specific uh, response can, uh, can be uh, identified. And why is that in general important? Because if we wanted to develop um, uh, an immune therapy, we should understand exactly how our immune system, Im immune, uh, system respond to a certain type of uh, pathogen. So if we want to develop an anti-candida uh, immune therapy, then we have to know where are the common uh, points of the immune response and where are the divergent uh, uh, points of, of the immune response. So with this, I would like to thank for your um, attention and I would like to thank all the collaborators that uh, we are working with, uh, some very um, nice and excellent scientists from, uh, from Brazil, uh, Ana Melia and Leonardo, um, from Europe, Mihai, uh, who is uh, one of the best uh, fungal immunologists of the world, uh, beside Ana Melia, and um, uh, Ilza from, from Jena, Attila from Budapest, and also my, my laboratory uh, here in Seged. And uh, I would like to thank also the funding sources, which is really important to, to have money. And uh, with this, thank you for your attention. And I'm, uh, I'm really uh, looking forward to your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Attila, for your very interesting uh, speaker. Uh, we have some questions, but first of all, I will thank you to put me and the Tete at the same level, <laughs> because <laughs> it's almost the, the, the graphic of the CFU from neutrophils in the brain. Me is, <laughs> and Nete is in another level. Anyway, thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, we have some questions, but we will start with the my question mm -hmm. because I'm talking first, <laughs> and I would like to talk about beta glucan. I like the, this interaction. I think that it's a very important molecule for fungi infections, and um, it's important to everyone to know how fungi uh, fungal infection is is important in our days. So everyone likes the virus and the bacteria, but the, mm -hmm. the fungal, it's a very interesting field to, to study. And the beta glucan is one really important molecule on the cell wall, the, 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 the cell wall. And I want to know, if you block the, the, the CR3 in the knockout mice for adectin one because mm -hmm. both of them are PRR that internalize, they induce the, the phagocytes, and they use the sick. Because mm -hmm. when you block sick, you are blocking all the, the PRRs on the cells. So mm -hmm. did you double uh, block mm -hmm. uh, these animals? Yeah. Yeah, the, this is a really, really good a good idea. So we, we did not do uh, um, a blocking experiments in the in the animals because what we found that is in vitro we have an effect so in vitro when we take out the the, the macrophages for example and we infect them we have a reduction of phagocytosis and we have a, phago a reduction of uh, cytokine production what we do not have is a systemic response uh, so there is no systemic response so what we what what we could do is a double knockout maybe so missing the dactin one and cr3 for example in the animals and then see if we have a systemic response uh, after this double knockout uh, generation yes because the beta 2 integrin is related to the acidification of the phagolysosome <coughs> yes. so yeah. you can uh, see something interesting if you block and you have a higher probably i don't know yeah yeah, that, that's, the, that's, the interaction. yeah i i actually i believe that they are collaborate even in the recognition of candida paraxillosis so this is 
This is for sure, and this is a great opportunity and a great idea. We will definitely test it. But my major question is why why the dactin one does not play a role in the systemic systemic infection, not even in the long term. So we have data uh, even with 60 days. So it's not like sick and card nine that you leave longer the animals and then uh, at, after a certain point you have an increase in the in the in the CFU. No, they are behaving like the wild type. However, if you took out the macrophages from the dactin one knockout mice, then they are behave very differently than the wild type. So the dactin one is really playing role in the phagocytosis and uh, and uh, killing and cytokine production in the case of parapsinosis as well. But in systemic system, no. So this uh, is interesting. Later I will tell you our results about the gut microbiome from the actin knockout mites. It's completely okay. different. And probably if this systemic difference should be a more complicated uh, yeah. explanation. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah definitely. We have a question. Do you want to, to talk, uh, Simone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Raquel? Uh, so the next question is from Raquel Almeida, and uh, she says, thank you for your presentation. My question is about the pyroptosis. Mm -hmm. Did you check if dactin-1 through sick or CARD9 activation could induce or inhibit gas dermine D? Okay, so um, not in this study. Uh, we, uh, we investigated pyroptosis in, an, in another study where we used the THP1 cells. Uh, uh, THP1 cells uh, which were uh, activated with PMA, so they were actually um, differentiated to matured macrophages. And um, what, we, what we saw in, in, uh, in that, uh, that study, that if you block sick and uh, also CARB9, then uh, you have an alteration of, uh, of uh, pyroptosis. Um, I might have actually uh, a slide uh, for that, if I'm not uh, putting that somewhere. Uh, just a second, uh, because that probably will be uh, more... Uh, uh, just a second. Yes. So, um, no, maybe I cannot uh, share this. So, uh, what, what we found is actually uh, sick uh, plays an essential role in the in the uh, inflammasome activation, and also CARD9. But uh, in the case of pyroptosis, we found uh, uh, controversial result. Controversial result, results. Sick were uh, absolutely essential for pyroptotic. Uh, 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 pyroptotic uh, uh, mechanisms, but uh, but not CARD9, and that uh, really surprised us. Uh, I cannot explain that, but uh, once we uh, uh, block the, uh, the when we use cytokalazine D, for example, um, then uh, uh, then we found uh, interesting interesting uh, uh, phenotypes, which is which is somehow between apoptosis and pyroptosis, so we were not sure what is happening in these microphages, really. Uh, did not follow that path, really, uh, in details, but um, uh, just make a short, a short uh, answer. CARD9 seemed to be involved in the pyroptosis, at least in our, uh, in our hand. Oh, sorry, SICK seemed to be involved in the pyroptosis, but not CARD9. And this is somehow really weird, I know. But uh, we did not check the, this phenotype in the in the mouse uh, model, and nor in the in the in vitro model where we used it in uh, in in our in our uh, in vitro um, um, experiments. Okay. Uh, Attila, uh, I think that the, the brain results is really interesting. Because yes, I didn't I know <laughs> that the candida could induce the, the brain infection. Do you think that the neutrophil is working like a, a Trajan horse? 
Oh yeah, yeah. So actually, uh, it's exactly what I think uh, that they can work as a, a train horse, or they can have other uh, other effect. Uh, uh, somehow helping uh, the fungal uh, cells going through the blood brain uh, barrier, or um, or somehow dactin one is because we found it in. In, uh, in the dactin-1 knockout mice as well, that there is an increased uh, CFU. So somehow dactin-1 can have some uh, effect there. And also the neutropenic uh, mice show the difference in the brain. Um, so uh, blood brain barrier and fungal infections are really a hot topic. I have, I have no evidence to show you that it's really a Trojan horse. We actually don't know how they uh, cross the blood brain barrier. It's a, mm. It is a transcytosis, or they are just uh, go through to the tight junctions, or or uh, there is a Trojan horse effect, like uh, immune cells is taking up the cells and going through the blood brain barrier. So we we have actually no idea about that that point yet. Did you uh, carry uh, Did you carry out some experiments? using neutrophils to see uh, its mm. function, like the phagocytosis, acidification of the phagolysosome, as you did for macrophage, to know if the neutrophil that uh, from a uh, chimeric sick mice uh, have some possible, some functions that is not working very well. No, we did not, uh, we did not analyze the, 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 the neutrophils yet. Um, and uh, why? Because uh, I did not show you the, the results, but uh, uh, when we uh, stained the, the tissues with uh, immun immunochemistry and we, uh, we used the, the CD86 uh, uh, and MPO markers, then we did not see any any uh, uh, infiltration on macrophages, uh, neutrophils uh, at the early infection points. So we believe that uh, at the early point, early infection, neutrophils are not really important in the candida parapsilosis uh, infection. And neutropenic uh, mouse model uh, support that idea. Because if you look at the neutropenic uh, uh, results, at the early time point, there is absolutely no differences in the CFUs in, in all, all kinds of organs. Yeah. But this could be another other, uh, point that we should uh, consider. This is a great idea. Yes, I agree. I don't hear you. If you think uh, that uh, in this infection, you could have uh, IL-17 response, uh -huh. You have neutrophils uh, do it across the the, the mm -hmm. infection, so probably the the yeah. function could be, uh, could modulate this some um, some kind of the resistance or not. This is actually a, a great point, and uh, our previous work, which were published in 2017 or so, when we used PBMCs, human PBMCs, and we infected that, them with candida albicans and parapsilosis. We found that candida parapsilosis does not induce IS-17 response, response almost at all. There is no IS-17 response in contrast to candida albicans. So um, uh, that could be the the bridge uh, between uh, between the innate and the the, um, the the adaptive response. Yeah. Okay, we have I think another question. Okay. So Yes. Uh, so in the same line that you talk about the, the brain infection, uh, mm -hmm. Hakiao is asking, uh, do you think this candida tropism by the brain in sick mice is related to the immune privilege organs? And would you have any data in testicles? Hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is uh, this is a great question. Uh, I have to be honest. We did not follow up yet the the brain brain data. I have a great friend and a great collaborator in in the states, uh, Luis Martinez, who is who is an, a, a great expert on uh, on blood brain barrier uh, studies. And we sent 
uh, him our strains, and we are really interested on, on these phenotypes. Um, uh, there are many questions. Th this is a great question that the short answer is I have no idea. Uh, we did not check it. But this is only one, one, uh, uh, one phenotype which is uh, showing us uh, really interesting uh, um, um, uh, translocation to the brain. Uh, the other one is the dectin one, as I mentioned earlier. And the, the third one is the, the neutropenic model where you have lower, lower uh, CFU if you don't have neutrophils. And, uh, uh, and the nude mice, the nude mice has an extremely high, high uh, CFU in the brain. Uh, so a lot more than, uh, than the wild type and almost that much as in the kidney. So what, what we think is, you know, this is suggesting that neutrophils can play somehow, uh, but they can worsen the, the, the traffic. Mm -hmm. The T cells, however, in contrast, they are maybe really protective. So that is something that we are that we should have uh, to have the 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 the, um, uh, the tool to 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 investigate in the future. But um, as uh, again, um, some of this data I already showed you uh, is unpublished. <laughs> Almost everything unpublished. Mm -hmm. So we are. This is a work in progress project. So um, I just wanted to show you that. That is, uh, that is something uh, really interesting differences between different species. Okay. And Jivagri is asking if, do you have similar studies with Dectin 2 knockout mice, mm -hmm. or if you think to do? Oh, or, or Minkle or, or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm, um, we do not have these mice in, in my laboratory. Actually, um, uh, one of the collaboration between our laboratory and uh, and uh, uh, Anamelia's laboratories originally was thought to to dissect these questions uh, TLR4, TLR2, Dectin2, and so on. Um, uh, so we do not have data about that. Uh, what we know, and we did, we uh, we blocked all of these PRRs uh, in in vitro experiments on wild type macrophages. But my fear is that even if you have uh, an effect in vitro, then it does not mean that is an essential essential component in vivo, as it has been shown with with uh, with actin one. Mm -hmm. uh, I also also know unpublished data from uh, Mihai Netea's lab that they tried dactin one knockout mice and infected it with candida parpsilosis, and they did not see any alterations. I'm not aware of any other studies using Minkle knockouts or, or other other type of uh, uh, lectins or or PRR knockouts. Thank you. Stitch, Attila, thank you very much to present your work here. It was a pleasure for us. It's a pleasure for me to see you again and talk to you. <laughs> thank and, you. And then thank you. Thank you very much. I hope the students enjoy a lot. And the, so. <laughs> uh, Leo sent a message uh, talking that your talk was very nice. She enjoyed. It's okay, so thank you very much. I hope thank that you, I professor. soon in Brazil because I really miss ah. Brazil. Yeah, I'm, I I'm hope the, Brazilian now. <laughs> <laughs> I hope in the next year we have our uh, grants to to bring your research. Then you are in my list. You are the top of my list for the next print. I don't know if you still getting this money, but you are the the next one because now uh, university did. Uh, a cooperation with the Hungary, so we can bring you. It was the problem for the first step of the print program, okay. but now oh, this you. was fixed. So I think that it, probably in 2021 or the next, the other year you will visit okay. us. Good. Okay. After the pandemic, hopefully. We yes. Will <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, okay, Professor. Guys, Bye -bye. Great discussion. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye -bye.
Bye, bye. Obrigado para os alunos que assistiram o nosso seminário. Uma boa tarde.